All right, the Southlander is ready and I'm gonna see it for the first time. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> I am not in South Carolina. I am in Salem, Ohio at Lehman Upfit, getting a whole bunch of work done to Southlander. Let me give you some backstory so that you understand and tell you what all is about to happen because there's gonna be a bunch of stuff in this video. Today is finally the day that Southlander, my JKU, is gonna get a complete overhaul and go from being basically a stock Rubicon to my full out Overland build. We're doing so much today and I'm, I'm so excited about it. If you're new to the channel, I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. Most of my adventures are in the Southeast. And then you might be wondering, why are you in Ohio to get a whole bunch of work done to your Jeep? Well, we'll get into that in a second, but I was actually born in Ohio. I have grandparents who still live in Worcester, Ohio. And if you stick around to the end of the video, you will meet my grandmother who was 100 years old. And we're actually up here to watch the eclipse. That's, that's part of all of this. So this is a dual trip. I came up here, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of work done to the Jeep while I'm here. I'm gonna go see my grandmother and we're gonna watch the solar eclipse together. So stay tuned at the end because she is absolutely amazing and you're not gonna to wanna to miss the solar eclipse footage. Now that you know that, here's a little bit more about what we're doing to Southlander. So my JKU is a 2018. It's got about 95,000 miles on it and all of those miles are on the stock suspension and by now, it's just getting tired. I drive down the road, and it does this when I hit 65 miles an hour. The, the weight of the tent, the years, the, the hitting the trails, all that stuff, all of that stock suspension is just, at this point, very tired. The tires that are on there are 33-inch Pathfinder all-terrains that were on the Jeep when I bought it from the previous owners, and they've got 50,000 miles on them, and so they're ready for, uh, they're, they're pretty worn out, I guess is the best way of saying it. They, uh, they need to be replaced. So in the, the idea that I need to replace the tires and my suspension is pretty tired, I finally decided to move from going to my stock setup to really building it out as a true dedicated overland rig that is also my daily driver. So we're gonna be doing uh, suspension, we're gonna be doing new tires, we're gonna be doing uh, a snorkel, we're gonna be doing some other goodies on there uh, to make it really kind of the vehicle that I want and need to hit the trails that particularly happen in the Southeast. So Ed Lehman owns Lehman Upfit and he has this shop in Salem and he invited me to come up here and get this work done here because he's a huge fan of the community, he's a fan of the channel, it just sort of worked out. And so this sort of became a great opportunity to get a whole bunch of work done by a shop that really knows what they're doing and specializes in this kind of work. And it just was sort of a no brainer to come here and do this. And as you can see, they've got this super cool 392 right here. They know what they're doing. While I was busy yapping, Ed and his son Seth got to work. The first step was to get my tent and roof rack off the top of the Jeep so they could get the Southlander onto the lift and start removing all of my old stock suspension components. Ed and Seth made quick work of getting the Jeep torn down. Ed's used to Ohio Jeeps that battle with snow and road salt. So it seemed like a welcome treat to get his hands on a southern jeep that didn't have so much rusting and seized bolts as he was accustomed to. Definitely a lot cleaner than the ones we get around here. We're going to be installing the Metal Cloak 2.5 inch game changer lift that will replace a lot of my current suspension. Springs, sway bar and links, all four control arms, shocks, and brake lines. We're also going to be adding a new drive shaft that will work much better with the new height of the Jeep. You can see how it's like all bound up. Yeah. It'll destroy that boot and then all your grease leaks out and your drive shaft goes poop. That's why you need a drive shaft more than anything. cloak arms because of the bushings and the construction of the tubes. They hold up. They work. That's why I like them.
While the guys were busy installing the Metal Cloak components, I was busy upstairs binge watching Venture to Rome videos on the TV. Metal cloak bump stubs, you can easily take out some. They recommend four, but if you just want to take an inch out, you don't have to tear them apart, you just pop an inch out. They give you long, shorter bolts, so as you take them out, you got your bolts to stick in there. But you should need four inches ish. So we're going to start with that. That's what they say. So we got this metal cloak bracket here. This changes the direction your shock pivots. Normally your shock's made to pivot this way and it does nothing for your flex and your axle side to side. So instead of your shock mounting here, your shock's actually gonna mount here, it's giving your axle the ability to pivot side to side for articulation. And it just goes right on your spot here where your factory shock would have gone. You gotta make a couple holes bigger, drill a little bit, but it goes right here, moves your shock from here. So now your shock goes like that. And again, while the guys were busy doing real work, I was busy watching the story till now. So Ed and his son have gotten the front suspension pretty much in place and it's hanging. Now they're working on the rear suspension, but this is the Metal Cloak two and a half inch game changer, but we're doing three and a half inch springs on the back because of the weight of the tent and sometimes I've got the trailer on it. And so it's gonna help with that, that extra weight and sag in the back. So when I talked to Metal Cloak on the phone and was telling them what my situation was, that's what they recommended was the two and a half inch, but with the three and a half inch in the rear. So as we're wrapping up the suspension here, we're gonna start running this ARB breather kit. This one here is gonna go from this rear vent tube. Instead of it ending right here at about frame height, we're gonna run it up higher. We're gonna run it up into about the gas filler. So as you're driving through water, you're not taking on any water into this axle vent tube. We're gonna do the same thing on the front from the front axle and also the transfer case. The transfer case, one, it runs across the transmission and then up a little bit. We're gonna get them up mounted higher up by the brake master cylinder. So we're gonna get it to where he can drive through water up to at least the master cylinder without taking it in through any vent and getting it into his axles or his transfer case. So also with the game changer lift, you get longer brake uh, hoses to replace your factory hoses front and rear. So that's gonna make it to where we don't have this, right now we're at full droop and our factory brake line, we had to unhook it from the frame here. It will not give us enough travel. So now we've got better hoses and we got longer ones. You see the uh, extra length here. We're gaining about four or five inches extra length. So we're gonna get those on next. While Ed was finishing up the new brake line, Seth got busy on the tires. We're going to be installing 35-inch BF Goodrich KO2s, which are a great all-terrain tire. But in truth, one of the biggest reasons I went with this particular tire was because it was still one of the few off-road tires that you can get with the white letters. And as you'll see soon, the white letters on the wheels look so good. Mwah! Chef's kiss. That said, comparing the difference between my old tires and these new tires is like night and day. Then it was time to install my new drive shaft. So the aftermarket dry shaft, it has what they call a double carton on this end. So instead of you having the angle on one new joint, you're spreading it out among two. So now this angle here isn't as big of a deal as it would have been with one new joint, or especially with your factory Zeppa joint. Your factory joint here, this is your Zeppa joint. It's not made for an angle pretty much at all. That right there will break it. That's all it's got. So being able to break that helps a ton. And then on this end, you just got a single U joint. So new flange on both ends. All right, so now we're going to swap out his JK tire carrier. The problem with these factory ones, they're made out of cast aluminum. They will, uh, any extra weight on them, even stock weight sometimes, they'll crack right around this top edge right here, allowing that tire to fall off. So we're going with this TerraFlex kit, which gives him Number one, the adjustability he needs to put this tire where he wants it. Number two, the strength. Um, these are made out of steel, 
powder coated nice. So that it goes on in the same spot, it just gives us the ability to raise it up in the air wherever we want it and in and out. So we can still make, no matter what the backspacing of the wheel is, we can make contact with these rubber bumps to keep that tire tight against the lift gate. All right, so we're getting this thing ready to uh, put this rugged ridge snorkel on. We're gonna replace the bottom of the air box. We gotta pull this fender off so we can route piping through the inside of the fender. Then we're gonna, up here on the A-pillar, we're gonna be taking off this piece of metal here and then trimming the top of this fender so this snorkel can fit through that. And this snorkel here has a high and a low setting. This would be the low setting, so it would just come out here. This would be your high setup, will go on top of here. It's sealed, silicone seal too. So that'll all press together. That will go there and that will go on top of it for the high. All we gotta do is pull this fender off and make it happen. So we chose to go with the Rugged Ridge Snorkel for, for two reasons, really. One is because if we went with something like uh, the AEV Snorkel or an ARB Snorkel or something, anyway, you end up usually having to cut the hood here. And I didn't really want to cut the hood. And with this one, you can always kind of go back to the stock if you need to. Uh, but the other reason is I've got my Tyree lights mounted here. And if we did the snorkel that kind of came up the side of the hood, it would come up and we'd end up having to, to relocate uh, the lights that are here. But with the snorkel being here, I don't have to relocate anything. So there were sort of two reasons for doing that. With the majority of the Jeep done, it was time to turn our attention to installing the new Rhino Rack. This rack requires drilling into your top, but since my old rack already put a hole in it, I've long since passed the point of being concerned about it. What we have here is a ratchet, uh, ratcheting things in so that uh, they get tight. With the rack installed and the suspension ready, it was time to put the Jeep on the alignment rack to get everything properly tightened down. Metal Club Gold set, the gold standard. YouTuber, YouTubing, YouTuber. <laughs> Seriously though, I'm gonna leave the, the link to uh, Lehman's YouTube channel down in the description. Go follow their page, like it, subscribe, uh, leave a comment on some of their videos, help them grow, because they are phenomenal people doing awesome work and uh, they deserve a bigger audience. Right now we're running around the block. Every time we do an alignment or uh, a lift, anything, we run around the block, make sure everything's tight, handles good, nothing's rubbing. Every Jeep's a little different. So you get aftermarket parts, mix them with different aftermarket parts. Things may have closer clearances than they should. So we look them over pretty good and then we drive them to make sure everything's tight, make sure uh, no rattling, no noises, everything drives good. Then we bring them back and uh, we retorque everything again after we drive them the first time. I know, it's not what I was expecting. It is really snowing. Like, I'm, I don't even know what to think anymore. Like, it's, here I am in, like, my t-shirt because, you know, that's what I expected. I, like, packed mostly shorts and t-shirts for this. I was like, I'll have a pair of jeans and I'll bring my, my Terran jacket in case it rains. No, I didn't expect snow. Never expected snow, not once. And here I am outside without the jacket, because I'm smart. I'm Ed with Lehman Upfit here in Salem, Ohio. We've got a Jeep shop called Lehman Upfit. We do anything Wrangler, JK, JLGT, to basic maintenance. If you got an oil cooler leaking, clear up to if you want to do a Hemi swap and one tons. So anything in between, lift kits, re-gears, tires, wheels, leather swaps to cat skin, uh, LED lights, anything you want to do on your Wrangler. This 392 is absolutely sick, and I'm going to let Ed tell you a little bit more about it but 
it's huge. This thing is great. I wish, I wish I had the ability to have a 392 like that. This is our shop rig 392, it's a 22. Um, so it's a 392 engine. Nothing done drivetrain really. A drivetrain's pretty much stock 392. It's on Dana Ultimate 60 one ton axles, Hutchinson double beadlocks, uh, metal cloak, four and a half inch springs, six pack shocks from metal cloak, Terraflex long arms, uh, Genrite bumpers, Genrite rock slides, Genrite tire carrier, metal cloak inners and it's fender chopped. It's got some KC lighting on it and some Novasight lighting on it. Other than that, metal cloak full skids, LehmanUpfit.com. Lehman Upfit on Instagram. Lehman Upfit with a space on Facebook and Lehman on YouTube. They are a phenomenal shop. I know he sounds very humble, but they do amazing work. Watching him work on Southlander, he's very meticulous about making sure things are actually done correctly and going above and beyond. Like, I, I trust him so much to work on, on everything because what he's done has shown me like they truly care and he really, really knows his stuff. All right, the Southlander is ready and I'm gonna see it for the first time. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Ah, oh, it looks so good. <laughs> the only thing that might be more impressive than Ed's Jeep building skills would be his hospitality. Ed and his wife organized a meet and greet the morning of the final day of the build. I'm pretty sure most people showed up for the coffee and donuts, but it was pretty cool to meet some of the local fans. Can you say subscribe? Yeah. With the Jeep just about finished, Ed added one final touch. Now it's time to take it outside and stare at it. All right, Matt, your Jeep's done, so you simply must go. I had to make a really quick detour as I was coming through Canton, because this is where I was born. I've actually never been here before, except for when I was born, but since then I haven't been here. So but yeah, Mercy Hospital in Canton is where I was born, somewhere in there. That's where this whole thing started. All right, guys, I promised you, you would get to meet my grandmother. This is Grandma Mary. Wave hi, Grandma Mary. Hi. <laughs> she's 100 years young. <laughs> and she's still smart as a, she's smart as a whip, aren't you? Say yes. <laughs> tell them tell him to press the like button. Press the like button. There you go. You heard her. Press the like button. <laughs>